Welcome back to The Jay Douglas Show. So, if you ever watch this show, you know that this is like the audience is realtors, right? It's all about coaching and tips and how to be really successful, but without fail, every week, I get that message saying, how do I become a realtor? So today's show, make sure you check it out. It's all from the basics. How do you get in the business? What should you prepare for? And you know, all those questions that is in your head right now, I got the answers for you, stay tuned. So today is for you, the person who's thinking about getting in the business, because you've heard all of the same lines that every realtor has, hears before they get in the business, and that's, hey, you'd be a really good realtor, or you know what, you should be in sales, or maybe it's a realtor who ran into you and they're like, hey, have you thought about getting in the business? And, and then you start having all those thoughts in your head of like, well, I'd like to make a lot of money like Susie, I've seen her do it before, and also she's always vacationing and she always has this awesome schedule and she makes it on her own, like, there's all those perks as well, right? So if you're thinking those things right now, this video's for you because I just wanna break down the top five things that you should be asking yourself getting into this business. So number one, motivation and why. Do you have any idea why you're actually committing this, this crazy act of getting in the real estate business and starting your own business because that's what it is. If you didn't know it yet, 99% of the realtors out there are independent contractors. They're not employees. So are, you gotta think about when you decide to get in this business, you're just starting out as like the little pea in the pod and you wanna blossom into that big tree. What I need you to start with is figuring out why are you doing this? Get with your family, get with your loved ones. How is it going to impact their lives? Spell it out on paper. Too often we have these crazy ideas in our head and when we try to put them on paper, we have a really hard time doing it. All that is is putting you into step one of the first uncomfortable situation that you're in inside your head. You need to really think it through because you're about to em embark on a lot of uncomfortable situations of new things. So let's just start first with why are you doing it, what's it gonna do for you, and how is it gonna impact your life? That's number one. Number two, let's talk about money, savings, because when you get in this business, as I said, you're an independent contractor. There's not that every two weeks you get that paycheck. You are investing into your business. So you need to have some startup capital. That need, needs to include really two different thoughts, thoughts here. First one is about $3,000 to get in the business. Now, can you get a real estate license a lot cheaper than that? Yes, you can, but I went ahead and tacked on the joining the Association of Realtors and the MLS and getting your, the, the, keep, the uh, lockbox app on your phone. There's a monthly subscription with that. Um, e and insurance, there's all of these things and that you have to get along the way. We'll talk a little bit more about how to get it, but first off, realize it's about $3,000 to get into it. Then, from day number one, once you have that license, until your first paycheck, or more importantly, don't just think first paycheck, your first couple consistent paychecks. Sometimes you get lucky, you knock one out of the park right away, and that's great, but it's not consistency. We're looking for consistency, right? So. Um, what I recommend is if you're gonna be a solo agent, probably six to nine months of income saved. I don't want you to be having to learn while you're stressed out about money. So go ahead and prepare that you need to have that kind of savings in place. If you're thinking about joining a team, um, first off, do a lots of research. We'll talk a little bit more about that as well. But the, every team's, they're all different, right? They have different setups, different pay structures. Um, with our team, I recommend you have somewhere between three and four months savings. For many other teams out there, I might recommend up to six months savings because you're gonna get different types of assistance when it comes to a team. So you may not need to have as much capital saved up. Just know it takes money though, right? Um, number three, how do you get a real estate license? And how do you get started with all those things I rambled off earlier? So the, when I did it 15 years ago, there was only the classroom option. Now, there still is the classroom option in all these towns out there. But there's now also the online version because you get the opportunity to do it at your own pace. There's pros and cons to that. It's totally up to you. I say do whatever is comfortable for you. If you're a classroom kind of person, sign up for the class. If you think you can operate on your own and, and you can go at your own pace, online's the way to go. Um, but know that once you do that, you just commit it into your new journey. They're gonna help you along the way because every, every real estate school out there knows that all the questions you're about to ask is like, once I get my license, or how do I get my license? How do I take the test? Is there a state, is there a national? They're gonna educate you through it all. So I would say don't overthink it. Just find the right real estate school for you. 
There's tons of them out there. Just do your research. It's pretty simple. Now, once you get that license, let's talk about topic number four here. Interview and research. Interview and research. So when I say interview, when I got in this business, I learned very early on that the interview process is actually kind of backwards in the majority of the real estate industry. Um, you may think that you need to go interview a real estate company or you need to be interviewed by a real estate company, but the reality is, is you are going to interview them. And, and that's very true in most of the cases. What I would challenge you to do is find a company that doesn't operate that way. Find a company that is truly going to interview you. They ask for a resume. They want to see what you're committed to. They want to have multiple times where they get to know you. What I've learned is that if someone is going to put a lot of time in and decide if they're the right fit for you or for them, for the brokerage, that probably means that they're going to invest a lot into you. Because if they're just going to hire anybody and everybody just because you have a pulse and a license, then they're probably not going to invest that much time into you. I see it time and time and time again. So the interview process, make sure you start to recognize, am I interviewing them or are they interviewing me? And for what purpose? Because it will, you'll just learn a lot. It'll give you the opportunity to ask a lot of questions. Now on the research side, there's independent companies, there are franchise companies, there are teams out there. What I would challenge you to do is interview them all. Um, anybody that, that interviews with our company or any of our teams, I always ask them, who else have you interviewed? And if they say nobody, I'm going to challenge them maybe to go talk to a few other people because I never want to sell them on the idea to join our company. Anytime I sell them on the idea to join something, that means I've convinced them and they're going 100% off of just faith. And you know, as great as I appreciate that at times, that will create doubt and fear when you go through that honeymoon stage. It, it never fails. There's always that moment where things are really hard and you're like, did this person sell me on this idea and they got me? So what I wanna challenge you on is don't put yourself in a sold position. Make sure you do your research, you do your homework. Look at online reviews from the consumer standpoint. Look at online reviews from the agent standpoint. Um, look at their video, their social media. Actually stalk all the people that you think you'd be hanging out with online because if you're gonna spend a lot of time with them, you need to see, is this the fit that I'm gonna feel? Um, one, of our, uh, one of our hiring um, methods is, it's really so simple. It is, I call it the vacation test. I just wanna make sure that whoever we hire, since we're gonna spend a lot of time with them, could we pass the vacation test? Could we both get in a car, drive down to the beach, and have a good time? Not that we would, we just wanna make sure I don't wanna throw somebody out of that car. You should also consider the vacation test too when you're thinking about joining a company. So interview, research, make sure you put the time into it. Now, number five, this is the fun part right here. It's spread the word and just jump in. You've made your decision, you figured out who you're gonna to go to work for, and here's the number one mistake that every realtor makes when they get in. They become a secret agent. They don't want anybody to know about them until they have some sales under the belt, or they have their business card, or they have their brand, all that kind of stuff. Don't worry about that. You joined a company, leverage their brand, Get the simple business card right out the gate and get to work. Let the world know that you got in the real estate business because if you don't let anybody know, not many people are going to do business with you. Um, if you ask most successful agents, their number one, number one um, resource of new clients is the people they already know. It's their, we call it the sphere of influence um, or your past clients. And if you don't have past clients yet, you've got a lot of friends and family and acquaintances that you need to generate that business from. Yes, you can buy online leads. Yes, people can hand you referrals. Yes, there's all sorts of other opportunities. Still, your number one resource should be who do you know because you changed your lifestyle and you just became a real estate agent. If you have any questions, um, once a month we do a seminar for new realtors. If you're interested in knowing when that is, just shoot me a message, comment below, whatever you'd like to do, I'll let you know when that date is and when it's gonna come up. And so you can pop in, check the place out, and we can give you some information. Hope you enjoyed this show. And if you're thinking about getting a real estate agent, best of luck to you. Hey guys, Doug Edrington here, CEO of Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, J. Douglas Properties in Chattanooga, Tennessee. If you are thinking about getting in this business right now, I wanna communicate with you. I wanna get a conversation going. Also, maybe you're already in the business and you're like, Man, I'm tired of trying to figure this out on my own. I'm here for you. I want to help. I'm looking for people to grow this business to the next level, and it's going to take people just like you who like this kind of stuff. So do me a favor. Click on the link and let me know what you want to talk about. We'll have a conversation connect right away.